ายบุตรไม่ยามรอนโชอยู่เฮาสตองไงแย่ไอ้บุตรไม่ยามรอนได้โชอยู่เด็ดใจแย่ And here they are, the Vicho One Lite, the more affordable version of the Vicho One. These are going to set you back three hundred and forty nine dollars as compared to the four hundred and thirty nine dollars of the original Vicho Ones. In this video, I'm going to show you what is actually the difference between these and the more expensive ones. So we're going to do an unboxing, and I'm going to check out if these are good enough for you. So absolutely stay tuned. Watch the video because all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang, and if you're excited about the virtual ones and immersive glasses and VR headsets and all the good stuff that you can put onto your face to live in more immersive worlds, this is the right channel for you. So. Absolutely, subscribe and click on the bell button so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. But now let's find out what is the difference between the Vitro One Lite for three hundred forty-nine dollars and the standard Vitro ones for four hundred thirty-nine dollars. Are these probably good enough for you? So let's find out and let's start with the unboxing. And here we go again. The Vitro unboxings feel so good, just very premium. And you've seen that before, and the same here again. So from the outside, actually, the Vitro One Light box looks just like the Vitro One standard one, but it's in white, which is very nice. And also for the Vitro One Light box, it opens up just like this. Just like those super luxury cars, where the doors open up, right? Instead of to the to the side, yeah, we have this here too. <laughs> yep, and here we get something to read: safety guidelines. On the right side, we have the quick start guide. Let's check this out for a moment. Nobody is going to check that out, but actually, you should, right? Because you will learn which app to download if you want to use that on your phone. Then we have this, some cloth to clean it, and here we have a quick start guide as well. Yep. Okay, let's get to the main event here. This is the hard case. It's a very beautiful one. But before we get into that, let's check out this little box here. It comes with all these different nose bridges for all the different nose sizes. For me, I could simply use the one that's pre-installed, but if that doesn't fit well. You see, you have lots of options here. Okay, but now for the main event, and yep, again, the same nice hard case that we saw before, but this time in white. And I simply would say this looks and feels premium, just so well done, Vitro. Nice. And here it is. You get a first glimpse of the headset itself. I truly love this design, this white design and these dark. Blue, dark blue, black shades, great. Very, very cool design, in my opinion. Just like I told you, the best looking headset in this kind of category. And from the outside, actually, everything is the same. Looks just as the Vitro One. The only difference that you see from the outside is the USB-C here, right? You simply plug it in now. Before there was some kind of magnetic port, and I'm going to show you that. We still have two buttons here, and they would um, do something like uh, volume and um, brightness. Yep, and we still get the diopter, so you can uh, choose the diopter from zero to minus five for those of you who are short-sighted, and all the others can still order other lenses that would magnetically be attached to the headset. The Vitro One lights are very light as well, so no comparison to Apple Vision Pro or Quest 3. It's a totally different category, very comparable, of course, to the Vitro One. And yeah, the cable. So USB-C to USB-C, no more magnetic shenanigans. <laughs> Let's compare this now to the Vitro One here in blue, and as you can tell, they look so similar. From the outside, the only difference really is the port, the USB-C port for the Vitro One Lite, standard USB-C. For the Vitro One, we got this magnetic port here. 
So yeah, let's compare that directly. That's the only difference that you can see from the outside. Yep, here. And that is not a big deal in my opinion, right? So yeah, I can also plug it in no problem at all. The other difference is that the Vigil One light does not come with this self-dimming lenses that the Vigil One has. But well, that is really a matter of taste if you need that or not, and I'm going to talk about it more in a moment. Yeah, so let's check what else is here. This is really important because you don't have this automatic self-dimming feature. You could simply use this outer shell here if you don't want to see your environment and if you want to concentrate on your movie or on your video game, simply put it on and therefore, in my opinion, the self-dimming feature that you don't have here with the Witcher 1 light, that is, in my opinion, totally fine. Yep. This is important. Forgot to do that. And now let's check them out. All right, so this was the unboxing and now you already know the main differences. First of all, I would like to tell you that I think that these are the most stylish glasses in this category that I've ever seen. So I already liked the other colors and the design of these, but this takes the cake. I think this is absolutely cool and my favorite. Now, the big difference between the light and the standard version is simply the following, as I've just told you. So, you don't have these outer dimmable lenses. So, here for the original Vigil one, I could simply um, click a button and then the outer lenses would dim down. It's a cool feature. It's a really cool feature, but this one, it doesn't have it. But honestly speaking, that is not a big problem because they will give you this here, this outer shell, right? So you simply put it like this and now it is completely blacked out. So you will only see your virtual display, your virtual screen and that's it. So that's that. And then the other big difference as compared to the Vitro One is that the the cable, the cable that goes to your source, like for example, your um, yeah iPad Mini or your Steam Deck. So this cable, this is a standard USB-C cable now, just like with the competition, right? Like the the X Real and the Rokits. Whereas the original Vitro One, it came with this kind of magnet connector. So also, I must say, in my opinion, that is not a big deal. So I really enjoyed that magnet connector and it works like a charm. However, I also saw some people that said like, oh, I don't want to have this magnet connector. Probably it could more easily lose the connection. Uh, well, actually, that's not the case from my experience, but I don't think that is a problem now that you would just like plug it in like this. So that's that, right? So now let me simply check it out and tell you if there is any kind of difference in terms of the optics. I suppose it's not because they are the same glasses, but let's simply do it. So I'm going to check it out now. So here now, not more magnetic. I just, you can just click it in like this. And the end of it right now, I'm going to put it into, into my iPad. I could also put it into my Android, for example, or my Steam Deck. Just the same thing like before. And let's see. Let's see what happens. And, yep, the magic is happening already. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks just as gorgeous as before. We have these OLED screen now. Right, I have two OLED displays, both are full HD, and you cannot see any pixels at all, right? So, yeah, if you hear like, oh, full HD, that probably is not enough, but this is micro OLED, and it is so tiny that with this full HD display, you cannot see any kind of pixels. It looks really good. So, no, you do not need to wait for 4K. Yeah, hopefully we're going to get 4K to get more FOV, 
right? Because the FOV is still like small, but for the use case of having that virtual screen in order to play games and in order to uh, watch your Netflix or whatever, or to play Steam Deck, that is perfect. And it's just such a nice display, such a good quality. So let me start a movie here now. And uh, yep, choosing it right now. Let's just start something here. Okay, yep, it's happening. Let me put this on. Oh yeah. It's great. It is just a great experience for watching movies, for playing games. It is a big virtual screen that is floating in front of you. So, just to clarify with you, the virtual screen that is floating in front of you, it is moving together with you, right? So, if you move to the right, it's going to move with you. They also have, actually, uh, this mode where it's kind of three off and the virtual screen can't stick somewhere. And it, it is working, but it's not a mode that I particularly love, right? Because the FOV is already so small. And then if you fix the point, if you fix the display there and move a bit, then, um, yeah, the small FOV will kind of cut into that. So that's not a mode that I would use or that actually makes lots of sense in my opinion. So in my opinion, having that virtual screen that moves with you, that's what you get here and that works really well. If you want a virtual screen that you can fix anywhere in your room, then without a doubt, you could go for the Apple Vision Pro, right, for... $3,500, well, this is 10 times cheaper. Or you could also go for the Quest 3, which costs just a bit more, but, well, you don't have that nice OLED quality that you get here. Also, you cannot connect the Quest 3 to your Steam Deck in order to play your Steam Deck games. And this, in my opinion, is actually one of the best use cases that you can get out of this with the Steam Deck or as a movie watching device with your Android, USB-C phone, or yeah, or your iPad mini. So what is my conclusion here for the Witcher 1 Lite? In my opinion, this is just as good as the Witcher 1, right? If you don't care about that dimming feature, which is cool, but you don't really need it because you got this, then why don't you save these $90? Also, having that um, standard USB-C instead of that fancy magnetic plug, yeah, it is good. So absolutely, $349 is an amazing price for what you get here. This is a great headset for watching movies and playing your Steam Deck games anywhere on the go on a virtual screen that is floating in front of you. Very, very cool. And again... The reason why I like Witcher so much, first of all, the quality is just top-notch. Everything feels like, yeah, Apple, right? It's just such a high quality here that you're getting. And they really thought about the accessories. Again, this here is my favorite accessory. This is the mobile dock. Not only will give it like six hours of battery life to your Steam Deck, but you can also connect two Witcher glasses here, right? So like you and your partner you can watch a movie together or you can play a game together and this just makes so much sense and the competition doesn't have it so competition this year is so good right and, and therefore that is the reason next to the other ones this this the design is so good and all and all the other things that is why i really enjoy the vitual and that's why i recommend it so very very positively a very positive here, my outcome, my yeah, my impression of the Witcher 1 Lite. And I especially like the design as well here. That's the, the white is absolutely the coolest. Very nice. So we got lots of positives here with the Witcher 1 Lite. But there's also some negatives. Just as the Witcher 1, this only has 60 hertz. So if you need 120 hertz, for example, if you own the RG Ally and you really want to make use of that 120 hertz that it can output, then better look for other headsets like the Rokit Max, which does have 120 hertz. 
For my use case, it's absolutely fine. I'm using this with the Steam Deck, which anyways only outputs 60 FPS. So these work perfectly with the Steam Deck and also for movie watching. I'm absolutely happy with what I'm seeing here. So therefore, yeah, I am happy with 60 Hertz. Not going to overheat. It's simply running very smoothly here. So that's it for the Vitor One Lite video. Hope you enjoyed it and really hope this was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. The link down in the description of this video and in the comment section. Do let me know what are your thoughts about the Vitor One Lite. Do you want to pick these up here or do you say like, okay, you know what, I spend $90 more and I go for the standard Vitor ones. Yeah, looking forward to find out about this. That's everything I got for this video. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, what I will become. if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.